Now chances are, sometime playing through your division campaign, you started to notice that some of these bad guys don't exactly look like the other. You come across some factions that come at you with these high tech military gear, other guys that won't stop lighting you on fire with the motherfucking flamethrowers, and dumbasses that just rush you with bats. What's going on guys and gals, my name is Bryson from BCNS Games, and in this video we'll be looking at the four different factions that we have inside of the division, learning what exactly their goals are, who their leaders are, and how exactly they came into fruition. This city fell apart. Rioters. When society falls and everybody has to watch out for themselves, it's no surprise when people start going crazy and trying to look out for number one. This is where you have the rioters. When Manhattan Island was shut down and all of its citizens trapped inside of the city, people started turning on each other. Groups of thugs and gangs popped up, and from there, rioting was a common thing to see. The common rioter mentality is I'm gonna look out for me, myself, and I, and fuck the little guy. Stealing anything they can get their hands on from any kind of citizens that aren't able to fight back, rioters are the most common enemy they come across in the division, and probably the easiest to deal with. Some of these slick dumbasses actually come at you with bats, hoping that your submachine gun won't mow them down by the time they walk the 50 feet between you to hit you. Though, do be warned, when these guys do get to you, when they swing a bat, those fuckers are Babe Ruth. They will do some damage. So don't take them lightly. This world is our playground now. Rikers. Not to be confused with regular raiders, Rikers are a group of convicts who took advantage of the virus outbreak and escaped from the world's biggest prison complex located on Riker Island, right outside of Manhattan. A good rule of thumb to be able to tell whether or not you're dealing with a raider or a Riker is they can usually be identified by the orange jumpsuit they traditionally wear from their stay in their prison cells. The Rikers are led by a woman named Lorraine Barrett, an initial convict herself. After the initial outbreak of the virus, Lorraine decided to organize any of the convicts that were willing to stay behind into the Riker gang. From there, she was able to claim territory all throughout Manhattan Island. The basic ideology of the Rikers is once as convicts, they had everything taken away from them, and now with this second shot, they're going to take anything they want and never let anyone take it back from them. And I mean, Barrett is every shade of crazy you can ever think to imagine. You don't believe me? Take a look for yourself. about who's in charge. Some people want to stay the victim. They want to cry. I'll give you what you want. You want to be the victim? Well, I'll make you one. I'll make you one. Yeah, definitely a woman you don't want to fuck with, even on her best day. The cleaners, aka the jackasses with flamethrowers you always see. These guys are the previous well, cleaners of New York. These guys are the garbage men, custodians, janitors that once the virus hit and they lost everything, take it upon themselves to do the somewhat noble task that they claim to clean the city once again. They do this through the only logical means, of course, by burning everything. And when I mean everything, I mean everything. Men, women, children, anything these guys believe have any sort of risk of spreading the contagion must be burnt and turned to ash. This group of pyromaniacs is led by a man named Joe Farrow. He has decided that the structure of New York is currently too soft to do what is needed to be done and has taken upon it himself and his other like-minded individuals to clean the cities of New York one block at a time. My one big question is though, if Joe truly believes anyone in New York is a current risk to spread the contagion, wouldn't him and his other pyromaniacs also be a big risk and that rather than burning little Susie and her mommy and daddy, maybe he should turn his flamethrower on himself. You know, do us all a favor. Is not a right. is not a Finish everything up, we have the big boys, the last man battalion. These are the hard hitters in the game, they're gonna come at you with the heaviest guns and the thickest armor. These guys are previous special forces that were retracted from all of their assignments around the world and directed into Manhattan. They were initially hired to protect the financial assets of Wall Street, but upon the virus getting worse and their request for extract denied, they decide to ignore the previous orders and instead work to try to establish some kind of structure in New York in order to regain some kind of order through all the chaos. You may ask, well, what's wrong with that? That's basically what the division agents are doing. Yes, but they do this in a sort of dictatorship kind of way. Mandatory curfews are put in place and orders of priority are set and, well, regulated by the LMB. Whether or not you're worthy enough to live, die, receive food or rations are all dictated upon your worth to the LMB. Basically, those who don't work, don't eat. Those who go out after night, get shot. It's not exactly the kind of order you're hoping to reestablish. 
while effective, it does kind of strike against what the whole thing the division is doing against in order to save anyone and everyone that they can. This hardcore rogue militaristic group is led by a man named Lieutenant Colonel Charles Bliss. With Bliss's kind of Nazi Germany idealistic views, he's not so far away to resembling another historical figure we all know. Close, but I kind of had someone else in mind. There we go. That does it. There's always another way. Last but definitely not least, we have everyone's favorite group of badasses, the Division Agents. The Division, or the Strategic Homeland Division, is a group of secretly organized agents that are embedded all throughout the United States to act as a sort of sleeper cell agency. Created by Directive 51, signed by the President back in 2007, the Division is supposed to act as a means of last resort. When society is failing and there is no other seen possibility, the Division is activated. When society falls, the Division agents rise. Given the most state-of-the-art tactical equipment, everything from portable mobile riot shields, deployable mini turrets, to heat seeker mines, the Division agents are equipped with anything they would need to be able to take on any force that goes up against them, in order to be able to re-establish some kind of order throughout Manhattan Island. Now I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope this information helps you guys be able to kick a little bit more ass out there all throughout New York. And until next time, guys and gals, my name is Bryson from BCNS Games, and I'll check you guys in the Dark Zone, and I'll see you all in the next video.